50 English Setter Facts Every Owner Should Know Number 1. English Setters, often regarded as the gentleman of the dog world, is a versatile dog breed, celebrated for their charming and graceful appearance. These dogs typically stand at a height ranging from 24 to 27 inches and weigh between 45 and 75 pounds. Number 2. When you check out the English Setter's head from above, you'll notice it's got an oval shape with a moderate width and a smooth, refined texture. This head is a tad broader at the ear area than the brow, giving these dogs that distinctive profile. Number 3. The eyes of English Setters are ideally dark brown, bright and moderately spaced, conveying a gentle and intelligent expression. Their eyes are nearly round, a fairly large size, and positioned neither too deeply set nor protruding. Number 4. Their ears are just the right size, with a gentle rounding at the ends. They are set nicely towards the back, ideally at or below the level of the eyes. When these pups are chilling out, their ears hang close to their head. Number 5. The nose of an English Setter is either black or dark brown and fully pigmented, and their nostrils are wide apart and large in size. Number 6. When viewed from the side, the muzzle of an English Setter appears long and square. It has good depth and it features squared and fairly pendant flews. Number 7. The English Setter's neck is a long, graceful masterpiece, showcasing a blend of muscle and sleekness. It arches elegantly at the crest, and where it meets the head at the skull's base, it showcases a clean and polished look. Number 8. Whether in motion or standing, their top line presents a level appearance or a slight slope downward, devoid of any drop, extending from the withers to the tail. This results in a graceful outline of medium length. Number 9. The front end of an English Setter is all about well-developed forechest, with the sternum's point slightly sticking out in front of where the shoulder connects to the upper arm joint. Their chest is deep, striking the perfect balance to allow for smooth foreleg movement without being overly wide or round to get in the way. Number 10. At their back end, you'll find a croup that's almost flat as a pancake. The hip bones are set with generous spacing between them, and the hips themselves round off beautifully as they flow into the hind legs. Number 11. The upper arms of these setters match the length of their shoulder blades, creating an almost perfect right angle. The shoulders snuggle up quite closely at the tips, and the shoulder blades lay flat, blending seamlessly with the body's curves. Number 12. English setters showcase brawny and broad thighs that are impressively developed. The pelvis spans about the same length as the upper thigh, creating a nearly perfect right angle. This setup keeps a harmonious balance with their front legs. Number 13. The tail of this breed is like a sleek extension of its top line, gracefully narrowing to a fine point just long enough to reach the hock joint or slightly less. It stands tall, keeping straight and level with the back. Number 14. The primary body coat of an English Setter is short to medium in length, laying flat and having a silky texture. The show or bench type typically has a long flowing coat that necessitates regular grooming. In contrast, the hunting or field type sports a shorter coat that demands less grooming. Number 15. In this breed, feathering is a characteristic feature found in the ears, chest, abdomen, underside of thighs, back of all legs, and on the tail, which should be silky, draping loosely in a fringe fashion. Number 16. The base color of an English Setter's coat is white, adorned with variously colored ticking, often referred to as flex or speckles. These speckled coat colors, when seen in English Setters, are commonly called Belton. Number 17. English Setters can be likened to the Peter Pans of the dog world, appearing to stay youthful for an extended period. In general, they typically don't start slowing down until they reach the age of 9. Their lifespan ranges between 10 and 14 years. Number 18. English Setters are generally robust and healthy dogs. However, like many dog breeds, they can be susceptible to conditions such as dysplasia, parvovirus, and other common diseases. Number 19. Congenital deafness is often associated with the presence of the color white in a dog's coat. Since English Setters have white as their base coat color, this issue may be more prevalent in the breed. Number 20. Elbow dysplasia is a heritable condition that frequently affects large breed dogs like English Setters. This condition can further lead to painful arthritis or lameness. Treatment may involve surgical procedures or medication to manage pain, and maintaining a healthy weight can help reduce pressure on the joints. Number 21. Deafness is a relatively common issue among English Setters, posing challenges for both the dog and the owner. While certain types of hearing loss can be addressed with medication or surgery, the majority of cases of deafness cannot be fully cured. 
Number 22. English setters can also be susceptible to food or environmental allergies, which may result in skin conditions. These allergies typically manifest itchy and red skin, which can potentially progress to bacterial infections. Number 23. Cancer, particularly hemangiosarcoma and lymphoma, is a significant concern in English setters. This breed is more prone to these types of cancer as they age. Number 24. There is compelling evidence suggesting that the English setter's origins can be traced back to crosses between the Spanish Pointer, Large Water Spaniel, and English Springer Spaniel. Number 25. The English setter is believed to have a history as a trained bird dog in England dating back to over 400 years. Artworks from the early 15th century depict dogs that are recognizable as setter type, providing evidence of their role as skilled hunting companions. Number 26. During the 17th century, these dogs were known as setting doggies and had become well established on British states. However, the development into the distinct individual breeds of setters, including the English setter, happened at a later period in history. Number 27. The modern English setter's appearance and development are credited to Edward Lavrak. Lavrak meticulously bred his own strain of breed during the 19th century in England. Number 28. Around 1826, Reverend A. Harrison sold a male dog named Ponto and a female named Old Mall to Edward Lavrak, forming the foundation of his English setters. Lavrak believed the strain had been purebred for the previous 35 years and continued close in breeding over generations until his bloodline excelled in dog shows and field trials. Number 29. In 1874, C.H. Raymond from Morris Plains, New Jersey, introduced the first English setter from the Lavrak bloodline to the United States, contributing to growing the breed's popularity in the country. Number 30. Another Englishman, Richard Purcell Llewellyn, played a significant role in shaping the breed. He found a strain by incorporating Lavrak's finest dogs and crossing them with the Duke, Reby, and later Duke's littermate, Kate's bloodlines, achieving excellent results in the process. Number 31. Another notable person, William Humphrey, inherited these dogs from Richard Purcell Llewellyn in 1925 and maintained their purity through generations until his passing in 1963. Number 32. The Lavrak line of English setters gained a reputation as the show type, whereas the Llewellyn line was specifically developed for their field qualities. This resulted in the distinction between the original field and hunting type as the bench or show type and field or hunting type. Number 33. Upon its establishment in 1878, the American Kennel Club accepted English setters along with eight other sporting breeds as its initial purebred registrations. The very first dog to be registered with the AKC bearing registration number one was an English setter by the name of Adonis. Number 34. The American Kennel Club classifies English setters as part of the sporting dog group. This group comprises four fundamental types of sporting dogs, which are spaniels, pointers, retrievers, and setters. Number 35. English setters enjoyed significant popularity in the United Kingdom during the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, with registrations of puppies peaking at 1,344 in 1974. However, in 2012, the Kennel Club included the English setter among the vulnerable native breeds due to a significant decline in their number. Number 36. In 2012, the number of registered English setter puppies saw an increase, prompting the breed to be moved from the vulnerable native breeds list to the Kennel Club's at watch list. However, by 2015, registrations dropped to 289, leading to a return of this breed to the vulnerable native breeds list for 2016. Number 37. Numerous English setter owners have observed their dogs sleeping in peculiar positions. This behavior is likely linked for specific angles that provide flexibility in their line of work, enabling them to effectively assume their characteristic setting position. Number 38. English setters are adept silent hunters, equipped with powerful noses for scent detection. These dogs keep their heads held high as they search for birds by analyzing scent molecules carried in the air. Number 39. Known for their versatility, they also proved to be excellent gun dogs. They would hunt by holding a fixed position to indicate the presence of game birds hidden in dense foliage. This allowed the birds to be flushed out of cover to be shot by the hunter. Number 40. English setters are ranked 37th in Stanley Korn's book, The Intelligence of Dogs, signifying above average working and obedience intelligence. When it comes to learning new commands, they typically require 15 to 25 repetitions. They tend to obey the first command 70% of the time or better. Number 41. Female English setters typically give birth to around six puppies. These puppies often lack the markings on their white coats that adults of the breed have developed. 
Number 42. Although considered a rarer breed, these dogs are often in low demand, which can result in a lower price tag. In the United States, when acquired from a registered and reputable breeder, these dogs typically cost around $1,000. Number 43, Countess, an English setter, achieved the distinction of being the first gone dog to attain a dual champion title. Her breeder was Lavrak, however, she was initially sold to Sam Lang and he subsequently transferred ownership to Llewellyn, under whose name she participated in field trials. Number 44, in the United Kingdom, the English Satter has enjoyed success at the prestigious dog show Crafts. The breed achieved the coveted award of Best in Show in 1964, 1977, and 1988. Number 45, at the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show in the United States, an English Satter achieved the Best in Show title in 1938. Remarkably, this particular dog was just 11 months old and it was his first show. It's worth noting that this occurred before the show's entry was restricted to champions in 1992. Number 46, Jim the Wonder Dog was a Llewellyn Setter known for his extraordinary abilities. Originally from Louisiana, he was believed to predict the sex of unborn babies. In his honor, a park was built in Marshall, Missouri, where he spent his final moments and passed away in 1999. Number 47, Count Noble was an English setter renowned for his death, having memorialized in an obituary by the New York Times. He was affectionately known as the $10,000 hunting dog and was celebrated as a national symbol of what was great in bird dogs. Number 48, Mark, the dog of President Herbert Hoover, was gifted to him in 1929 and held the title of a national and international champion in the canine world. Number 49, the renowned American actress Ted Davis was an owner of an English setter. Additionally, the famous French actress of the 1960s and the 1970s, Bridget Bardot, also had an English setter as a pet. Number 50, not to forget the iconic Clark Gable, renowned for his role in Gone with the Wind and numerous other films, was a proud owner of an English setter. Alright guys, now which of these facts surprised you the most? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.